Thanks, Rebecca. Hi, my name is Karn, and my team leads uh, supply chain for uh, electronics, powertrain, and battery at Tesla. And we've also got responsibility for indirect purchasing, construction procurement, and warehousing and distribution. So today we wanted to provide you a quick overview of Tesla supply chain and what really separates us from the typical uh, automotive supply chain. As you've seen in presentations prior from Pete and Drew and some others, Tesla designs a lot of the subcomponents that go into our vehicles. So we're not buying things that are off the shelf from suppliers. So supply chain is not purely a commercial relationship as it is in most other companies. We actually have an arm within supply chain called supplier industrialization engineering. And the burden of taking a, a drawing, a design from concept and turning it into thousands of products produced at the right cost and at the right yield falls with this group. Of course, they work very closely with design engineering. But really, the level of detail that our engineers get involved in terms of building the capability of the suppliers is, is, is pretty detailed. So, you know, once we get a new part, uh, naturally, with electric vehicles, a lot of the supply chain doesn't exist. The, our, our engineers would basically take the drawing, turn it into the manufacturing concept, do the equipment selection, and physically go to the supplier and stay there for weeks or months, however long it takes, to basically do the line bring up. Once the line is brought up and we're hitting the, the right rate, the right quality, at the right yield, then we work on things like automation and, and yield improvement and, and those types of activities. So th there's, there's a br big gr group of mechanical, electrical, industrial, you name it, engineers within supply chain, and it's their responsibility to, to take care of this. Now, this is a huge strategic advantage because we manage every detail of our supply chain, because we're so integrated with our partners that we know about issues before they happen. It's almost live. We've got dashboards, we've got connections, and across the 10,000 you know, 10, or so factories across the world that are ma manage making our components, we have a pretty good view of the health of those suppliers, and this has been a key asset in, in how we've been able to kind of manage things uh, uh, through a lot of uh, different um, issues over the past couple of years. So. Um, you know, supply chain is a, a game of perfection. Perfection is a passing grade. It's like a, it, it, you know, if one part doesn't show up, that line goes down, and our CEO finds out about it in less than 20 minutes. Tesla is very different than Apple. They outsource manufacturing. We do it in-house. So supply chain is kind of right in the middle. Uh, and, and perfection is, is increasingly elusive and very expensive uh, if you uh, kind of look at uh, all the, 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 the issues we've had to encounter over the past year. And, and today, we're just going to talk about how we got through the past, and then what are we going to do going forward, and how are we going to get there. So let me draw your attention to this slide. Uh, on the left, you'll see uh, a portfolio, our existing portfolio of products. Right at, at the top, you've got the SNX platform. In the middle, you've got the 3 and Y. I think everyone's more than familiar with, with uh, those. And then the, the Tesla Energy platform, which is a very high uh, rate of growth for us. And you and see don't forget the solar and supercharger. And solar well. and supercharger. Thank you, Roshan. And you'll see a reduction uh, in so and, and then we basically got the tier one and tier two parts. This might be boring, but a tier one supplier is any supplier that builds and supplies parts directly for consumption in our five factories. And our tier two supplier basically does the same thing for a tier one supplier. So they are the supplier to our supplier. And depending on the supply chain of uh, any one of these products, this can actually go down to the tier six level. So for example, if you're talking about the battery cell, we really get involved with the mines of like where we're procuring the lithium, the cobalt, and all that sort of stuff because we're procuring such high volumes of it. So uh, you'll see a reduction in the number of parts on the SNX platform uh, to the three and Y platform. And, and this is because of the great work our design engineers have done of making the car simpler and easier to manufacture. In parallel, we actually had a similar strategy in supply chain. We had cast a wide net to a lot of suppliers for the SNX platform. There was a lot of suppliers that we invited to partner with us. And we used that platform as sort of a filter to see which suppliers have the technical, financial, and cultural capabilities to match us, right? Who, 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 like, who do we invite to the party when we really scale things up? And we, you know, we, we really dramatically reduced the number of suppliers that we were dealing with for the 3 and Y platform. And this is an approach we'll continue to do for future platforms as they come along th that are even more high volume. So th this, this has really been our approach. Uh, it's made things uh, a lot easier. 
and it, it you know we, we could fi we could figure out the suppliers that were capable of, of moving at our pace and, and then the ones that didn't have the desire to or the capability to you need both desire and capability um, secondly the complexity on the tier two level uh, is is very high right it, the, the, these are the suppliers to our suppliers and they, there are a lot of components so think about silicon think about resistors capacitors diodes uh, all the little assemblies, all the raw materials, raw materials. All the, that's even further down. Yeah. But all these little sub-assemblies that have to come into Tesla, uh, the the complexity Im is immense. So even though at the tier one level we're talking about 8,000 parts total, s it seems like a lot, but it's not a lot. The management of the tier two is really where we excel, and I'd like to illustrate that with an example. Meet the car computer. Very innocent sounding name, and it's anything but. This is an absolute monster to manage. So I think you've all seen the picture on the left of the autopilot board. That's the top of the autopilot board. The autopilot board also has a bottom, and the bottom is populated heavily with components. On the other side of the heatsink, you've got the MCU, the multimedia cluster board. This board is equally complex. It's also double-sided, eight-layered. And these boards, these computers run so hot at peak operation that they have to be liquid-cooled liquid through a heatsink. So this assembly requires taking those two boards and then bonding them to a heat sink that's uh, hermetically sealed as an assembly, of course, flashing the software and all that sort of stuff. And then that's one part number that comes to Tesla. So this is an example of one tier one part number that's a very complex assembly to manage at the tier two level. And there's more than 7,000 components here. There's a, you know, as we stand here, a component's being assembled onto a car computer every 1.4 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. The line that builds this computer is the length of a football field. So it's, it's quite complicated. And initially, when we first started building this board, mm -hmm. due to the complexity of it, we had to rely heavily on labor. But once we dialed in the quality, the rates, and the yield, we started focusing on making this more efficient. The only way to control cost is by removing labor. The first step is removing labor. The second step is fully automating. The third step is turning off the lights and letting the factory run ideally. And that's going to be the goal for us here. So 95%, but our work is not done. We're going to be going a lot further than this. So this illustrates the point that a part is not a part. A part has a lot of complexity underneath it. Supply chain is, is a game of multiple tiers. And, and what's made us successful is our involvement in all the details with our supply engineers uh, that are Tesla employees. They're Tesla supply engineers. So they're like on our payroll that go and ramp up these capabilities that are suppliers and then just managing each and every attribute of it. You know, 7,000 a day through the chip shortage, through the pandemic, through all the other stuff that we had to deal with was, was very difficult to manage. But because we had all the details, we were able to pull this off.